Hello, everyone, and welcome to another special Legion Patreon episode of the Friday Nightmares podcast. I am one fourth of your hosting team this evening, Mr. Smoke Show Crawford, coming to you from Swartz Creek in the county of Genesee, in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, in the Milky Way galaxy. I am fully vaxxed, waxed, and ready to be called daddy. And with me, as always, is my podcasting partner in crime. Heather Powell coming to you today from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada. And finally, I have the two coolest podcasters on with me who are also from Ontario, Canada. I won't give their mm. specific locations, but I will say they're from Ontario. The first one I'm going to introduce is actually a big role model for me, and I never actually told him that. Um, I think he's an incredible podcaster. I think he's an incredible host. I actually think he's really funny and a really, really nice guy. Um, really, really nice person. I've had the pleasure of meeting him in person. He it's is one me. half. Sorry? Yes, it's, it's Scott. <laughs> no, then those things we've got, we define you. Um, <laughs> he is one host of the podcasting team, TGIF, Friday 13th Fan, um, Friday 13th Fan Podcast. And he is one part of the Exploding Heads team. He's actually the leader on Exploding Heads. And he's the glue that keeps it all together. And he is Christian. What's going on, Christian? <laughs> I'm doing great. You see the Vince reaction there? He's like, I thought this was me. I thought this was talking about me. I am doing great. And I am glad to be here. I am excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me. You guys have both been on Exploding Heads. Uh, and Vince and I are wrapping up TGIF 13 this year. And or 2025 I think, is when you're wrapping it up. Yeah. <laughs> so at some point. Whenever this the is gonna be, I didn't realize this was a Patreon exclusive episode. I didn't realize people had to pay for this shit. I was expecting this to be our TGIF 13 episode for June. <laughs> oh, that's, you can actually make it TGIF. And we, and we put it on Patreon for two weeks, but then we give it for free because no one really wants to pay for us that badly. So we, yeah. <laughs> we just try. I love the realism. Oh, did, yeah. I take up, did I take up enough time so we don't have to talk to Vince? Um, <laughs> he's kind of the special guest. Like, yeah. you're kind of, you're like, you're great, Christian. But like, so we've already kind of alluded to him. He is the other half of TGIF, the Friday 13th, fan horror podcast he is awesome i think vince is well i've said his name already but he is one of the funniest people <laughs> i've ever listened to he really keeps christian in check and if you listen to the two of them on their commentary they show you how commentaries should be done yes. and when scott and i did our commentary i tried to channel both of them because i think they're so both utterly talented and this is his first appearance on any other podcast did you hear that dave c first appearance <laughs> On any other podcast, welcome to Vince. Thank you so much for joining us today, Vince. Oh, you know, my agent called and uh, said, you know, you got to do this podcast. I said, what the fuck is this? And am I going to get paid? And I thought, oh, you know, I need to do some charity work. It's been a while. So there we oh, go. We're charity. Thank you very much. Yeah, we are definitely a charity case. We are charity. <laughs> like, when I first approached Christian about doing this, I'm like, do you think Vince will go? And I honestly, Vince felt like I was asking out the popular quarterback in school. Like, I was like... <laughs> Like, okay, maybe he'll say yes. You know, he doesn't really know me. Like, we've only met a couple times, but you know, like, I'll just put it out there. Was, was that quarterback like, gay too? <laughs> he sure was. He sure was. This is it. Like an A-list celebrity, you just don't take anybody's phone call. You just no, you they don't, don't. on anybody's podcast. They don't. Oh. Like every quarterback. Right? <laughs> it's true. It's true. Especially the Buffalo Bills. Uh, <laughs> the, we're... we're I just want to say, Vince, you look great. I, I can't stop looking at Vince either. Like, you guys look great, but I feel like I've seen you more. Vince, like, I don't know if it's Zoom or what, but, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Vince does look great. So any single men out there, you should know Vince looks great. And he's obviously very humble and starts from modest beginnings. So you definitely, oh, really? oh look at him. Wow, um, that's a real gun show. Shit. Yeah. I haven't been working out the beard yet either. So Christian, you look okay. <laughs> you know, Christian does look pretty good for someone who used to go to Sharkies in the 1990s with his best shirt oh, from the man. Chateau. <laughs> <laughs> this may have been the shirt I wore. <laughs> so Sharkies is a bar for everyone listening in Oakville. Christian, Vince, and I do live generally around the same area. And uh I, I kind of guessed that Christian went to Sharky's when he was younger, and I was right. Like, I kind of oh, just, he looks yeah. like a Sharky's kind of guy. I made appearances, <laughs> yeah. Sharky's was the place. Now it's a condo, so there you go. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I have a question. You Both of you guys went to Brock University. Did you guys yeah. go to Big Bucks? Was Big Bucks yeah. a thing? Yes. 
<laughs> yeah, Big Bucks was around. Yeah, Big Bucks. Big, and then it turned into didn't it get called the, the not the hip? I think it turned into the hip or something like afterwards. Like the all I know hit. is the names just changed of all these bars it was after Viper just, Room, and then it became Big Bucks, and then that's yeah, yeah. that's what it, the Viper Room. <laughs> well, I went to Big Bucks as a young Heather. We could have maybe been there at the same time. I would have been nineteen and just super happy to be out of the house. And that would have been, been, been like uh, yeah. I would have been two two thousand and two. No. We were the ones smoking on the dance floor. <laughs> Remember that? When you could just, like, yes. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I know we've already everywhere. kind of talked. <laughs> Sorry. And he's still smoking. Both of them are smoking right now on this podcast, along with Smokey Scott. It's just one big smoke fest. I can barely <laughs> oh, see them all. Show. Well, it is the smoke show, remember. Right? Um, so if you guys don't mind, we just wanted to give you a chance to maybe talk about how you met and started podcasting. Like like the Coles Notes version, version Christian. Like, you know, like break it down. The mini Vinci the, the mini, story. the mini one. Um, and then maybe how you started your podcast together and um why you're breaking up now. Mm. We'd like well, to know that too. Vince, it was very cool. Vince and I went to Brock to get like not together. We met, we were in film. First year mm. film, we kind of knew each other. Uh second year it got whittled down to like you know the core group, what like 15, 20 people. It yeah. seemed like it really whittled down at that point. Uh we headed off. Uh we shared uh the same love for horror at the time. Uh especially like I guess at that point it would have been 80s and early 90s horror and, boring, yeah. and horror rain <laughs> yes and then nice. uh, i also share rest, that love the rest is history <laughs> we moved in together in third year with two girls and uh lived together and uh made a couple of movies that sounds weird but, yeah it like, does not, not, yeah that's, that's, those are my kind of movies right there movies. The, apartment. <laughs> the basement room i'm <laughs> gonna talk a human centipede yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a totally different movie totally different like like movies which we still have to this day and then kind of after school lost not lost contact we kept in contact for a bit I they kind of lost contact mm -hmm. and it's funny because he lived like 20 minutes down the road yeah he and he needed a break sorry you no know, we were we were still hanging out for like a few years and then um for some reason yeah just life took us in one different direction and then facebook brought us back together like Aww. when facebook was fun not this facebook oh, so when <laughs> yeah. facebook was actually meant to just connect with people mm -hmm. and not judge everyone's life mm, no God, okay and i'm like i miss those Since i haven't seen you in a while like where have you been hanging out woody's well that would itch <laughs> <laughs> And it was There's my answer right there. Yeah. <laughs> I love how the local jokes are happening right now. And poor yeah. Scott's like, yeah, this is funny. And we're all like, ah. right over my head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know. Poor Scott. And you know what? I'm sorry if my internet does go on and off. It's being fucky today. So that's all right. We're fucking. Right. You've been, but that's it. And I just asked him out of the blue. I didn't research like like usual. Didn't even look. I just listened to some podcasts because a buddy recommended uh you. Uh, how did this get made which is still a podcast i listen to this to this day love that show not as frequently as before and i that that's what got me hooked and he and bloody good horror i think and i didn't think they again nothing wrong with the show it just wasn't my cup i'm like i i want more i like the camaraderie but i don't necessarily the show's not entertaining enough for me so then i just said hey why don't we do one ded dedicated to the friday the 13th didn't even look if there was other shows initially no, came up with the name <laughs> Yeah, and then we just, uh, and then we, the rest is kind of history. We recorded into like, uh, you know, just regular old earbud microphones, like these things that you used to get with your iPhones or still get with your iPhones. That was the microphone we recorded into. Wow. So we were really and then, close. Yeah. <laughs> you did you share one? Is that what you were doing? <laughs> we, all joking aside, we did have to. Because if you remember, <laughs> he, he, I would record it on my phone. He'd record it on my on my. Um, ipad but the downfalls were too close and it was it was overlapping the sound or whatever so i just ended up with just like scrap it and then i just have it hanging you remember we just had the microphone kind of hanging off and then we just won't be that's talking. amazing we were you know what you made it sound really good christian for recording like that i I've, oh. I've listened to a lot of your episodes and i've never i thought the quality oh. was always there so you oh, were an editing you. master because episode one through six still has me like kind of like oh, oh god they, they sound horrible now <laughs> this this microphone has been the, the staple since so well, i just got my own fancy ma microphone too this year i feel like a real Ooh. podcaster now yeah it's kind you can kind of see it but not yeah. really I'm, I'm still a bum still using the headset yeah it's because you're in michigan yeah. michigan true. but it works it does it works okay. i never I have... even knew that that was it even when we recorded 
<laughs> when you came on exploding heads, I had no clue it was a headset one that you had been using. All that oh, time. really? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, what's so cool. funny about it. It yeah, does have cool. some weird feedback that I got to edit out once in a great while, but other than that, it's not too bad. Well, your editing yeah. skills are really good too, Scott. Um, oh, well, I want to I want to do a quick switch back over to these two and talk about your sausage eating. So there's many times <laughs> in your episodes that you guys have sausages when you get together and you talk about them. Like you talk about through the episode, you'll be watching the movie. You're like, damn, we ate a lot of sausages. Fuck yeah, man, we had a lot. <laughs> sausages do you still both consume sausages together like is this a part of your friendship together <laughs> i'm just wondering asking for a friend hashtag scott crawford yeah. so i'm just yeah. asking you know i think vince would sausage free other than like the human sausage the <laughs> i i still eat sausages but i haven't seen vince now in well over a year it's been a year and a half probably yeah, maybe january february february of last year yeah yeah unfortunately um, I bought a few sausages. I don't have an indoor. I only have a. I don't have a balcony. So I have an indoor barbecue, whatever it's called, grill. So they don't taste as good. Barbecue. As they don't taste the same. Yeah, we call it barbecue here. <laughs> shut the shut the fuck up, Scott. Dave sees not good than you. All right. You know, I am on my own on this one. You are yeah. an island, my friend. An <laughs> island of non-baked milk. And you know what we're not doing? Fucking miles. Everything's in kilometers and Celsius. So you can shove it, Scott, if that's what you want to start measuring. Yeah. All right? Science. It makes that's me like, feel bigger oh, in centimeters, by the way. I have no problems here. Don't be yeah. treading on my freedom birds. <laughs> <laughs> freedom bird. I love it. My rats. My rats. My rats. I remember back in the day, a girl, a girl said, oh, you know, like the average penis size is seven. And I'm like, what? Centimeters? And she's like, no inches. I'm like... <laughs> Mm-hmm. Senator makes me feel better. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing like honesty in a relationship. Right? Yeah. Like you just might as well know what you're getting into. But on all joking aside, really, thank you so much for the two of you being here. I absolutely adore both of you. I've had the privilege, as I said, of making meeting Christian in person. And I meant what I said, Christian. You are really a role model when it comes thank to you. podcasting, one of the nicest people I've ever met. And, um, and Vince, I really hope I get to stalk you and meet you one day. That's the plan. I was kind of upset that you didn't come out last night, but I'll find you. You have to remind <laughs> me. I'm a day-to-day person. I, I, okay. I'm day-to-day. <laughs> I'll be like, Vince, come get drunk with me tonight on the patio. Exactly. <laughs> I'll meet you. Awesome. And yeah. when Scotty comes up here, which is the plan, hopefully we'll be able to all meet up together as well. Too, For sure. Yeah, that would be been awesome. To Ontario, Canada, Canada at all, but never been to Ontario. So we're going to go to yep. Niagara Falls. We're gonna to try to get through nightmares. Um, I've never had the guts to go in it. You guys, have you guys been to nightmares at all? Oh, I, ha- I have nightmares yeah, and in, screamers. If screamers is still, yeah, room. yeah, I want to go. I'll come with you for that. Oh yeah! Oh hell yeah! Christian, yeah. do you want to come or like? I'll come. Clifton Hill, man. <laughs> Clifton Hill is the place to go. They may come too. Who knows? Yeah, bring like, your, bring, your kids, actually. Houses. bring little Christian. I love little yeah. Christian. He's really funny. He's like you. He, he may cool. not want to go through the haunted house. He might be freaked no. out. I have video of passing by screamers holding Jocelyn. I think Carrie was holding <gasps> Jocelyn in her arms <laughs> and the music alone. She's like, no, no. <laughs> we still have that video to this day. And it, it's great. Gotta, and we just put it on to tormentor every now and then. Well, <laughs> that's good, right? That's how you keep your kids in line. That's how it works. <laughs> What were you going to say? Gonna go to time? streamers. Right. You got this great thing where they take the picture. I don't know where it is in there of everyone yes. reacting to something. And it's hysterical. It's my favorite part. Right. Uh, and, they and then we can put that up and we'll charge people because Vince will be on it and he's famous. So we'll see how much yeah. money we can Sign get. the picture, Vince. <laughs> Sign the picture, um, Vince. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited you- to actually make it out there. Like, because uh, let's see, what was it? Mar- March of 2020, I actually got my enhanced license so I could finally cross the damn border. And then the borders shut right the and then frick fuck down. You covid yeah happen right so i've been <laughs> planning this trip for a while yeah. and it just keeps getting pushed back and pushed back and now heather and i are just like yeah it's gonna happen someday. oh we joke about the borders opening all the time <laughs> like all the time license. you guys right. never heard of passports no 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 whoa <laughs> well, christian well, you know we can, better <laughs> we can get uh passports as well but uh in michigan enhanced licenses only cost 45 dollars, and we can drive across the border of canada we can't use oh, a perfect. airplane or go on a cruise ship to canada but so if I wanted to do those, I would have to get a passport. <laughs> but, anybody, since, yeah. but since you I got like an hour and a half drive anymore. from the border, I'm like, screw it. 45 bucks to be able to cross the border with my car. Hell yeah. Yeah. You're really close to the border. It's true. He doesn't live that far away from Detroit, but far enough. Thank God. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, in cities. <laughs> right. He lives near Flint. Yeah, oh. I do. Oh. Yeah, I do live. I live near. Where's your third eye? Is it like in the back of your head? Or something? Yeah, I got. I got it back there. It's. I got. I got my hair growing right now because it started showing again. So I had to let my hair grow out. 
but uh now thankfully i am like out i'm on the outskirts of a different town and uh the, so the water and everything's fine here but it's like in, in the city of flint is where all that shit's wow. happening which is like 15 minute drive from my house and ironically flint and where i'm from hamilton in ontario are those with tw- tw- twin city sister cities or something yeah that's what heather oh, really? was telling me yeah yeah i thought Sweet. you told me that heather i told you that oh yeah, yeah i told oh. you that <laughs> the assholes of each country <laughs> yeah, makes sense makes sense right like that's okay that's okay but there are armpits and that's all that matters uh so anyway we're not all just here to shoot the shit like this is the most longest opening we've had for a patreon because like we're oh, all funny yeah. and we all went sorry guys all... no no this is great yeah this i is love like... it brandon wasn't this fun brandon um <laughs> so <laughs> uh, today we're going to be talking about our top five uh, Canadian horror films, our personal top five. So this obviously isn't, you know, we didn't all get together and have a debate which ones are the absolute best. Our, our rules are very loosey-goosey for this. We don't even fucking have rules. I don't give a shit. If you think it's a Canadian film and it's one of your top ones, who are we to judge? We'll just judge you off air to each other. Um, exactly. <laughs> so... <laughs> we are, we will be giving shout outs. So these are just, you know, movies or honorable recommendations or whatever you want to call it that didn't make our top five, but we feel are worthy of mentioning. So I'll start with Scotty and then he can kind of direct us from there. All right. And uh, since there is uh, four of us, this is the first time we've had four on for the Patreon show. Uh, figure I'll just like list out the order. So I'll go me, uh, Vince, Heather, then Christian. We'll just kind of go back and forth like that. I, th- I think would be a good way cool. to do it. Uh, so yeah, I'll go through my uh, five honorable men- honorable mentions I have real fast. I'm not going to really talk much about them, but there are ones that were I was debating on. Uh, so of course, if we're talking about Canadian horror, I have to at least give an honorable sh- uh, honorable mention to Black Christmas 1974. Absolutely, it's pretty much what proto slasher from the 70s. So I freaking love that movie. Um, Blood Quantum from last year. And just because I enjoyed the movie, and this is from an American perspective, and when I got a chance to listen to the Fresh Cuts episode that you and uh, Moods were on, Heather, and hearing a lot of the more, like, in-depth details of what this movie was really about, like, really fascinating. Like how shitty we treated our indigenous population, yes. (laughs) Yeah, just like the messages behind it was kind of, like, eye-opening. Yeah. And made me like the movie even more for that. Um, Then, of course, I mean... I have to talk about Videodrome 1983. Freaking classic. I'm not the hugest fan of Cronenberg, as I've said in my last episode, but like I, some of his films are just fantastic. <laughs> um, then, of course, I uh, got like, I've touted this film forever too. The Void 2016. Just freaking love it. Uh, part of the Astron 6 team worked on this one. Uh, I think Stephen Kostansky, and I forget who the other one was, but freaking love this movie. Great, like, nod to Hellraiser, the thing. And, Kind of a nod to Assault on Precinct 13 as well. Uh, And then, of course, I got to give a shout out to this one. Just because it's so new, I didn't want to put it in my top five yet because I need to watch it a couple more times. But Psycho Gorman, 2021. My hunky boys. That didn't yeah. make your top five? Nope, just because it's I can't wait new. to hear your top five. Like, yeah. <laughs> an honorable mention list. Is fa- and like, that's it, my it, full top five. <laughs> ratings, pretty much. Ratings. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much. Yeah. There will be a lot of overlap. There will yeah. be overlap. For sure. that, yeah, I have fun. a feeling there wow. will be. That's awesome, that is Scotty. phenomenal. Yeah, so I'll say, like I, like I said, this is a, this was a tough, if, if this was a top 10, those this would have been my part of my top 10 list for sure. But Absolutely. yeah. Wow. Uh, so yeah, I guess we will uh, pass it over to Vince. You got any honorable mentions? So we're just doing honorable mentions now. Yeah, yep. and then we'll go around and do our like number one, number five. Oh, number five okay, because there's going to be those are the rules. Stuff. Yeah, so, with rules. So I'm more old school, as everybody knows. Like I, I probably haven't. I'm not up to date with the most recent uh, horror Canadian horrors, and that's because I'm a you know I like to do other things than watch horror movies. <laughs> what? I know. Hey, have you heard of this thing called summer series? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But my honorable mentions would be um, Happy Birthday to Me, um, which I didn't really know was a Canadian film. I didn't either, actually. <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, it's definitely a, a there. You know, it's I just love that. I more love the last half of the movie. The first half kind of sucks. And then uh, My Bloody Valentine. It's an honorable mention. It's not one of my top Thanks. five. Um, yeah, I know Christian's looking at me like he wants to kill me. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, And um, the good old Ginger Snaps. Yes. Nice. Really enjoyed awesome. That movie, yeah. 
but uh, those are my, I only have like three honorable mentions for that. Uh, I could have gone on and on and on, but I don't want to drone on like Christian because he will take all the- I, I, so. And I'm going to, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know me. Look, he, he got a bigger cut in the money that we're giving out. Like you got 25 cents, oh, oh, you got 50 sorry. cents. I got you the money, don't make, there's no money. Yeah. Yeah. Bird money, bird money. Actually, uh, I, Ginger Snaps was the one that I ended up cutting off of my honorable mentions because I do love that movie, but it was just right there. It's a good Part film. Part two, right? Yeah, part yeah. two is just something else. Holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Vince. All right. So, All right, Heather. Christian. No, what Christian. Up? No, it's me, Vince, He's you, sure. then Christian. Those are the rules. Kind of, I thought it stag- was Christian. I thought I went last. No, okay, we're, sta- we're staggering it, just kind of doing a little okay, bit of mix That's up. fine. Haha, <laughs> Christian. Save the best for last. Save the best looking for last. That's why. Um, Ooh, wow. I, I know. My God. I'm and really laying on thick. I want my DVD that I won or Blu-ray that you never gave to me, Christian, from it's Exploding right Heads. All right, I'll come over when I get my second it's vaccine. Still wrapped. And we'll have masks and gloves on and we'll do an exchange. She wouldn't fan square fence. Right? Vince is like looking at me like, why am I not getting the, the Blu-ray? <laughs> right? <laughs> he gets your friendship. That's more of a gift. That's oh, the best gift of all, right? Oh, wow. <laughs> you have to if I do that. Me. <laughs> all right so my honorable mentions i i had the hardest time with this list first of all i am a unapologetic proud canadian i am no problem admitting that i love our films i love canadian television i even watch the gemini awards like i dig this shit a lot so you know i am who i am and i also love politics and horror i'm a social justice warrior with a little bit of humor, but also a social justice annoying warrior. But I'm not a vegan and I don't do yoga. So it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so fuck Lululemon. Fuck Lululemon. Oh, yeah. um, but these were just some shout outs that I have to give. So the Dead Zone from 1983. This was a first time nice. watch for me. And yeah. man, I don't know how I skipped over this bad boy. It was fucking amazing. So recommend it to anyone who hasn't seen it. Great Encounters from 2013. I really thought that was a great found footage film uh i really God, really that enjoyed was Canadian. it yeah i really really enjoyed it. it so great film the void even though i'm not a lovecraftian person nothing can take away from my respect for that film it's an incredibly well done film has a really good budget like such a good budget that you're like this is canadian like you kind of like ah shit all right um really really good movie spiral from 2019 i talked about political films uh there's an there's an ending line in that that says no matter what people will hate and find a reason to hate yeah and i i'm a political person and that just fucking spoke to me and what i really respect about canadian films is sometimes they don't make it okay sometimes it ends and it's not okay and i really i really like that about canadian media um the change chris rock is awesome in that (laughs) pardon you say chris rock you know what i love spiral (laughs) from chris rock but this is the Canadian one. I know, I know. Well, Christian. actually, Spiral, Spiral's a co-production, but is it really? Yeah, I I take it away from your thunder. Yes, it's not your. It's time your, but your I, I know. I, I'm about to come in my pants. I just look. We're both. We're both <laughs> only children, and it's really reflecting right now. <laughs> Uh, right. the world i get it now i get it right? makes so much sense <laughs> right yeah. um uh, the last one is the changeling from uh 1981 i i really enjoy the changeling always have i think it's a really sad little ghost story and i'm going to slip one more in here slacks from this year i just love how they canadian I forgot you told me yeah. this yeah well i just love their hit at roots like i'm pretty sure they were hidden at roots in that fucking movie and if they weren't i still interpreted it as that and i think it's hilarious and i think some of the special effects that they did the practical effects with the jeans are, are pretty cool uh yet again for a canadian it's film fun. i think they really brought it so it uh, those are my recommendations slacks and it, it's damn good and i forgot it's funny maybe it's too new I'll, I'll take the the scott approach that it's too new to put on my official list but it might make my year-end list for sure yeah yeah i will for sure for me it will be in my top 10 i just thought it was so funny and if you've ever worked retail like it's just, just, like it's just one there. Too. remember cannibal girls I yeah. saw Eugene that. Levy, man Eugene Levy and andrea hmm. uh, tv every oh, man. night yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotta check that out Mm-hmm. so yeah that's my list so i guess I'm, we'll pass it over to oh sorry scott i just gotta say i'm shocked the changeling is in your honorable mentions i was gonna expect that'd be in your top five now i'm really curious oh my god my honorable mentions were super long like i could have talked more i could have talked about backcountry like i could have talked about a bunch of fucking canadian films that i loved right? <laughs> here it comes <laughs> right you know what I, Christian? wait your you'll turn you'll have to shut okay? me up you'll have to sh- <laughs> but i i want you you're gonna have to stop me. all right i'll have to drive over there get in my car and be like <laughs> 
Bang it on your door. Stop it! You won't stop talking. And then I go in there. I'll be like, Carrie, can you sign my book? You won't sign anybody's book. He'll sign my book. I'd like. Can I toot? Can I toot? I gotta toot my wife's book. My wife wrote a book. Damn it! Yeah, we're gonna promote it at the end. I'm buying one. Yeah. I'm buying them. Yeah. So don't, right. worry. don't worry. Rich read, Rich read the first five chapters. He's like, uh, this is long. And I'm like, yeah, maybe, maybe you're not the demographic. And then I asked my wife, I'm like, well, Vince read the first five chapters, but I don't think he's the demographic. Or who's the demographic? She's like, well, pretty much anybody that has a cock in his mouth. And I'm like, well, then he's a demographic. <laughs> uh, but a, a, a teenage girl thing is like, eh. I'm kidding. I'm joking. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I can't. You know, segue. Well, I wrote, Here's the thing. Carrie's Canadian. So I'm going to clarify yeah. that I read the like pre, 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 pre edited version. You did. <laughs> oh, yeah. You read like uh, I don't even know what draft you read, but it was pre 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 edited. And anyway, I will we will get into that because it's about whole horror yeah. and yeah. and like uh, like she'll kill me if I don't mention it. But it's not. Now. Oh, we're mentioning it. She's an up and coming Canadian artist. Did, was the Changeling your last one, or did you say you're sneaking one more in? I snuck Flaxen. Oh, Fla- Slax was the sneak. Yeah. Now, now it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got nothing to say. Uh, I'm about. I, I can't. This was great because it. I actually challenged myself. I didn't watch twenty four fucking movies, but I watched. <laughs> I watched a handful of movies to try to to try to bring me up to speed with some of the ones I I've, I've wanted to watch that I missed. And I'm going to give a shout out to uh, Adam McDonald as a director. Both Backcountry and Pie Wacket are great awesome fucking moves. movies. Yeah, uh, they didn't make my my overall top five list, but I can't wait to see what else he he does because those two movies alone, I didn't see that Home Sweet Home one. So I still have to try to track that one down. I think that was his first, maybe. I'm not, I'll have to go back and check it out. But I, I showed it to him. And now, of course, the actual <laughs> audible mentions. Uh, I am going to shout out that French movie that uh, I feel like is underseen. And it's 5150 Elms Way. It's that mm-hmm. French film. I I really like this movie. I think it's, it's escaped and a lot of people have not watched it. It's not traditional, like, you know, frame to frame horror, but I think it's got a crazy little message and it's like a, a, it takes you for a weird journey. Uh, And so like that, that one's definitely someone that I, I I don't know if it's my all time favorite, but I think more people should see it and check it out for themselves. Um, Then uh, because these guys are great and I've almost enjoyed every movie they've done, uh, enjoyed almost every movie they've done uh, (laughs) is the editor. Yes. Yes. Awesome yeah, film. that movie that movie is is great and it actually was on my top 10 initially uh and probably would still be based on this uh then i'll say uh stage fright 2014 oh my God. Uh, i forgot that one. that was a canadian slasher modern slasher that blends like old school with a musical and i thought it was absolutely fantastic um more modern uh two years ago or last year random acts of violence this movie's device like people either like they don't like the message or they think it's 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 muddy at the end but the journey and the and the actual pacing and everything else it keeps me glued i've watched that i've watched it again going in with all the hearing everybody's negativity on the movie or the ending at least and i'm like "Ah, i still love it i still think it's great uh and then i'll say pontypool Nice. This, yeah. I, I actually kicked this probably out of my, my top five, but Pondy Pool's great. Uh, you know, just I love that contained horror. Again, something about radio stations, anything on the radio. I love radio movies, talk radio, p- private parts, Pondy Pool, pump up the volume. Fuck. All these movies, <laughs> something intrigues me about these movies. And and that one's great too. And then my last one, because I stuck another one in is the Changeling. And what if a ghost story is done right? This is the How one that's done that right. Again? It's how did you say the chain the changeling i've been hearing changeling (laughs) oh did i say changeling changeling yeah changeling yeah but you know what i wouldn't put it past me to say changeling uh (laughs) that's just again me like trust me but the changeling as heather mentioned sad but what a way to tell a ghost story Mm -hmm. and probably one of the best ghost stories and uh some fucking creepy creepy scenes in that movie and And i'm sorry like it's it's yeah. subtle ghost telling like it's not like oh booga 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 like the country <laughs> movies are every five seconds you're like na 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 the ba ba da ba da like it's it's a it's um it's a realistic scare just yeah. right the look uh, again we could talk about we're not here to talk about just one specific movie but I do have to put a big asterisk here guys and I know I told you I talk a lot so I apologize but 
this I did make this difficult for me. I know you guys are loosey goosey and not anal about it. Sorry, Vince, but the the reality would we be didn't say that, that we didn't like anal. We just said we're not yeah. anal. Is the wonderful thing. I know you're missing all this pleasure. Let's talk about it. <laughs> a whole different show. The but I took co-productions out. So if I thought it was a co-production, I actually took it out. So that meant no martyrs for me, no American yeah. Psycho, no The Witch, no Orphan, Saw Two through Spiral, The Final Girls, all kicked to the curb. I thought Spiral was full Canadian. I didn't know it was Coke. Oh, so when I read it, no, it, no, it was Canadian. Spiral saw Spiral, not, not oh, the one I thought that you're Spiral 2019. About. Yeah. I thought that was you're, full you're, Canadian. You're probably uh, totally right. I, okay. I, I'm so not, I tried to do the same. Trust me, I'm not the encyclopedia on this. I, I'd like to think <laughs> I am, but I'm not. Uh, and then Cronenberg, I only put, I would only allow myself one. I, I said, otherwise, my top five list would be Cronenberg infused. Yeah, so that's, that's it. I'll stop talking. I'll say, because, yeah, I'm hoping that I did that because, like, uh, like I was trying to stick with, like, purely made Canadian horror films because there's a few that I was talking to Heather and she's going, yeah, that was co-production or that was only filmed in Canada. So I'm, I'm like, going, um, ah, excuse shit. me, Scott, that's co-production. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying, but this is dumb American yeah. trying to figure this out. So. Oh, don't call <laughs> yourself dumb. You're the furthest thing from I, it, Scott. I, I may have screwed up, too. Who knows? But that was sort of the, the loosey-goosey rules. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? Like, I agree. Martyrs, though, and like what you oh. said about Martyrs, what a fucking amazing film, right? Like, it that's would, one of my it, hardest watched films that I've had to sit through. Some of those scenes where I had to sit there and be like, this is a movie. This isn't really happening. These are actors yeah. because it was so violent. Well, that's my favorite movie of the millennium. Yeah, of, I can see of, why. Of uh, the two, like, uh, and uh, well, I'll say at least horror film. Yes. I, 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 I really do try to, sometimes I separate, I, I, I do horror and then everything else. I don't yeah. know why. Because we are horror first. Everything. Yeah. We are horrors first. We sure are. <laughs> Anally. Yeah, well, you damn oh, right. That's what said he left. Oh, well, bye, Vince. Thanks for being here. All right, Scott, why don't you, you start us me? off? Yeah, we can hear you. I don't know. It, 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 my internet's unstable today, which is basically my brain, so. Ah, oh, that's all right. <laughs> We're all unstable. Scotty, bring <laughs> us right. into number five. All right, so my number five is uh, anything for Jackson, the twenty twenty. Nice I pick. I watched this last year and just I think I've watched it already three times since it was wow. released because it's just such a insane, just nonstop like attack of the senses horror comedy, and like in the and it's just done right with the comedy where it's not like slapstick. It's just like kind of just sprinkled in there, just a little bit of levity. But man, like it's basically about this uh, satanic couple that kidnaps pregnant woman so they can uh, pretty much uh, do a reverse exorcism and put their uh, dead grandson inside the pregnant woman's baby. And wow, they accidentally <laughs> and they're fumbling idiots with like how they try to like Satanists because they don't know what they're doing and accidentally like summon a bunch of different demons into their house and. All sorts of just insane, violent shit just keeps happening on repeat over and over and over again. And the fact that this director was a Hallmark movie, a Hallmark Christmas movie director mainly, and then just jumped into horror out of nowhere, freaking blows my mind. But yeah, this is just like one of those films that I just have so much fun every time I watch it because it's just so like over the top. Yeah, good choice. Nice. Good choice. Good movie from last year. Really good movie. Oh, yeah. I think For it was sure. like my number three from last year. I loved it. Awesome. All right, Vince. Number five. Uh, yeah. I will just quickly go over this one because we've already talked about it. <laughs> I do love Changeling is my number five. Aww, nice. And I, 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 change I lead or that. change a lean? <laughs> it's, 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 the of it's the kind of lean of change. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I just watched it again because I wanted to know if it was, you know, still. And it it's not scary as much as it is, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess brooding and, and slow burn. and uh, But still has some of those great, yeah, ghost movie scares that are classic as opposed to the ones today where they fly at you and that kind of thing so that's my number five nice that's awesome good taste Vince obviously this is a podcast of good taste yeah uh so oh. my number five is what keeps you alive from 2018 uh I did so not realize was, I was Canadian oh. so this is a modern day Canadian horror film filmed up in beautiful Muskoka and I really love the dynamic between this couple and yeah. the change in the relationship happens very early on and what the protagonist has to do to survive 
is very smart at times. Like you really mm-hmm. don't know how this movie's going to go. And I love that about this film. You don't know who's going to survive. You don't know who's going to make it out. And I think the acting between the two female leads is incredible. And even the secondary actors, there's not many of them, mm-hmm. but they play their parts well. And the filming is extremely well done and really showcases how beautiful Muskoka is. So that's my number five. Nice. Nice. Like I, I'm regretting I know, I not realizing too, that one. Oh, I'm, <laughs> you, it's funny that those two girls are, are often overlooked at how many horror films they've been in, especially yes. the main girl. Oh, yeah. She's yes. been in a shit ton of horror films. Yes. Uh, it stains the sands red. Yes. Uh, both of them were in Jigsaw together. Yep. As well. Uh, oh, that's and, right. And, it, it's shocking. I, I, when you look at the filmography, you'll see how many times she was in. Uh, they've been in. Well, not together necessarily all the time, but just how much horror. A good. Call. And how many good Canadian <laughs> actors and actresses we have? I think sometimes Lots. we don't reflect as a country. And yeah, I sound so poppy, but I don't fucking care. This is our Canadian show on how good our talent is. Like we got really fucking good talent, and we have really good filmmakers. And sometimes when a film's Canadian, people don't realize it. They'll be like, "Oh, it must be an American film," because they don't. Unless it's some films that are over the top Canadian, like Good Cop, Bon Cop, or Bon Cop, Bad Cop, like where you're like, oh my God, this is Ontario and fucking Quebec written all over it. You don't know, right? So I really, I really like that film. I'm glad you guys dig it too. And and now we move to Christian. Christian, what's your number five? My number five is uh, The Black Coat's Daughter, aka February. Nice. A very, this is a very slow this is a slow burn, but if you stick around for the for the ride, there's some really creepy imagery as well. It's scary in the same sort of way that Vince described the changeling, which is that it, it it's sort of just just over this feeling of dread, and then just you you you're just like there, sort of absorbing the story, and it's not like outright scares. And I always think of it. The visual I get is this one scene after a particular death. And then the look of, of, of kind of this just sort of crazed look on, on one of the characters' faces just sticks with me. It's like, yeah, like just that. embedded in my psyche. And so for that, you know, just there's high praise. A high quality Man, film. What a great freaking movie. Yeah. And once again, I'm kicking myself. I'm going to be changing my list as we go, apparently. No, <laughs> no don't. Because now we're just showing of all the good films that are available. Exactly. Right? I'm, not, I'm not changing anything. I haven't watched half of these. So don't worry about it. Poor Vince is like, my God, what's been happening in the last 20 years of film? <laughs> Am I in a horror podcast? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, dude, Porky's. Oh, that's a good movie. And meatballs. <laughs> Porky's and meatballs, one to five. Those oh, are my top don't, don't forget about Strange Brew. <laughs> Strange oh, Brew. Yeah. <laughs> Canadian bacon. This is what I, this is what I love. I wonder if you want to watch old corny movies. Uh, All right, Scotty. Some- Sorry, you go, go ahead, Vince. No, I was going to say, there's some really dark Canadian films, like Incendies. Have you ever seen that one? No. Ooh. Oh, that is, it's 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 French, and it is probably the most mind-fucked movie you'll ever see. It's It borders on horror because of the grotesqueness of the acts of the, the people, but it's a very serious film. So Incendies, it's, I'll send it to you guys after. Nice. That's awesome. Cool. Thanks, Vince. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. So you want me to jump into my number four? Sure do. All right. So <laughs> this one was uh, mentioned in the honorable mentions as well, and that that is Pontypool from 2008. Nice. Um, yes. Mm, I just watched cool. this. I just watched this uh, like at the beginning of last year when we were doing our first time watches. And I've heard so many people talk about like, you need to watch this. You need to watch it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll put it on my list. Put it on my list. Never got around to it. Finally sat down and watched it. And I'm kicking myself for waiting so long because God damn, this movie was just <laughs> incredible. Like I like I even like was catching some of the Canadian references with uh, the was it OTP or OCP? OPP OPP the OPP yeah you know me no that's not the OPP you dealt with OPP yeah that's <laughs> <laughs> and I was even looking up the town and everything like that just to see where it was located and all that stuff and like obviously talking to Heather and like getting even more of the Canadian references but I just love the fact that this zombie movie is not your typical zombie movie and it just it's like the way this virus spreads is so fucking unique like just the way that it's like the usage of wording and just how that like if it's used and repeated over and over again it somehow turns them into zombies and like and it's creepy like when they when people start actually turning it's freaking just disturbing yeah and like just brilliant movie all around like 
because I'm one of those that just gets so burnt out in the zomb- zombie genre. They've done it over and over and over again. So when a zombie movie comes out and does something this unique, I am all about it. Awesome. I couldn't agree more. And my buddy Richard worked on the film. Oh, nice. That's I always, so every cool. time we bring up the film, I, I, uh, I remember him telling me he was working on it. And I don't, can you call someone a buddy if you haven't seen them in like 10 years? Yeah. yeah. If they worked on a film, talking. you better believe it. Yeah. You can absolutely talking. call them a buddy yeah. for sure. Yeah, I'm friends with so and so. I met them once. <laughs> yeah, that's oh. what I do with Vince. I'm like, Vince and I are super tight. We met online. I went, I went to school with him after I went to school with you, Vince. I know him from school, but yeah, he worked, he stayed yeah. in the industry and worked on that film. That's so awesome. You got to bring it up. Of course he did. And another buddy worked on Ginger Snaps. And oh I, I told the story before, and it makes wow. me very upset. I was working the night. He called me. He's like, hey, want to come down? We're hitting a werewolf with a car tonight. I'm like, I'm working. Oh, it's like, that sucks. And I miss, I miss seeing that being shot. You, know, you have all these friends. You have no excuse for that exploding heads movie not to be made yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just saying, yeah. Christian. They, they want to be paid, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. that'd be a problem that's true <laughs> you mean you can't just get a box uh, of timbits and some coffee and call it a day yeah. well you know <laughs> you know yeah. Heather, these Heather, and I can, Heather and I can be free talent just just saying that's right super <laughs> good here um so Vince what's your number four we're in four, yeah, four. Yeah, I'm gonna talk fast because my, my internet just does not want to cooperate today um okay so we brought it up it's uh, my birth year movie. And I feel the the movie that launched the sort of the stalkers, uh, killers style of the 70s. And that's Black Christmas. And nice. Uh, the original Black Christmas. I mean, not Christian's favorite 2019 one? <laughs> <laughs> the urge to kill is. I know, I'm just teasing. <laughs> bubbling up. I, <laughs> I really love this. Like, I love the whole setting of it. It, it can be a bit slow in spots, but um, they're like the whole, uh, the creep of the Billy and, and and you don't really and like Heather was saying earlier it's sort of an ambiguous um monster you don't really know who it is it like instead of you don't know who it is because it's a who done it you don't know anything about this killer like I, I think it's still even a mystery about who actually is the killer in the end is it an actual guy named like Billy or is it one someone faking it you don't you don't see him so I just love it it's just it's a lot of good dread and the creepy factor is on the top of the scale for me agree uh, it's like such a great movie and it just kind of reminds me it makes me sad that that uh historic howl theater that you and i went to heather that had the freaking uh heater go out in the middle of winter so we could <laughs> yeah. not even sit stay to watch black christmas where we, we were went, like oh it's under the chimney in here <laughs> yeah because we ended up watching uh it was gremlins and black christmas back to back at this theater when we first met we stayed for gremlins but we were so freaking cold we're just like let's get out of here like their heater went out and like Christmas is coming on and I'm like, it's too fucking cold. Damn it, this sucks. <laughs> I would that, yeah. They were just trying to stimulate what it was like to watch movies back in the old day. Like, remember back when there was no heat? <laughs> You're going to live yeah. it out right now during this movie. <laughs> Great choice, Vince. Uh, my number four is Rabid from 1977. Wow. I had Ooh. never seen this movie until like I was like, oh shit, I better. Because Vince was like, oh, I'm going to do older movies. I'm like, I don't know any older movies. So I was like, I, I know the popular <laughs> ones, but I I honestly hadn't seen Cube and other shit that I was kind of embarrassed about. So I was like, I've got to fucking like watch some Canadian films and this movie started off I was like ah, come see come saw you know it was okay but that last hour especially what's going on in the world now with COVID and vaccines and shit I was like holy fuck and just the change that happens when um the illness takes over and how people behave I'm like this is fucking mint for 1977 and I love that it was Montreal Montreal yeah. uh, I thought that was really fucking cool and yeah like awesome job Cornerberg number four for me and Christian, did you, have, did you ever happen to see the remake that the no. Sosa sisters did? I watched Sosa it last year. Sosa. I actually liked it. It didn't okay, get very, it. it didn't get a lot of hoopla or or praise, but it was a, a good take. Yeah, I you thought. I, yeah, I thought it was yeah. a pretty uh, interesting way of going about it because I was not a big fan of the original Rabbit. But I, I need to rewatch it though because that first half really just kind of it's, uh, it's slow. It yeah. is, yeah. but then when it picks up and it gets going, I was like, what? Right? Yeah. So like yeah, I liked at this moment I like the Saska sisters better, but that's because I want to go back and rewatch the original, and I bet I'll like that one more, no, like knowing that the other half picks up and because I think I just lost interest and then kind of zoned out because I do not remember that last half. That at all. happens. Or sometimes the mood we're in or other films we've seen. Yeah, I find that because I've been sure. watching more movies, like for legit. Brandon teases me that I never watched movies. He's not wrong. Like because <laughs> I'm forcing myself to do first time watches only. 
I watch a lot more stuff than I didn't see before. Oh, yeah. So my taste is changing. My opinion's changing. I'm beginning to identify things more in film. Like it's your opinion changes as you grow. Right. So. Oh, it absolutely does. All right. All right, Christian, bring us in. What's your number four? For sure. It was mentioned earlier, I believe as well. And it's the void. Nice. Uh, I feel like I got around this one because, man, I said I liked pretty much all the movies that came from this this group, but this is directed by different people that did the editor. So I feel like it's 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 a great way to be able to include uh, this one as well. And again, just amazing practical effects, great yeah. old school sort of storytelling. Um, and I feel like it gets better each time I've seen it. I've watched it three times now. So yeah. uh, it, it's definitely worth checking out if you haven't already. Yeah, I solid film. freaking love the movie. And yeah, Astron 6, I could have, like you with Cronenberg, I could have easily had like a top five with things the guys from Astron 6 did because I've <laughs> loved everything they've done. Yeah. And they're just so <laughs> ridiculous, but they like know what they're doing. And they have like such a good way of doing homages. For sure. Do you want to add anything, Vince? I thought you were going to say something. No, yeah. it was my, and my internet was going off again. Oh, don't worry about <laughs> oh. your internet. No, I haven't seen The Void yet. It's on the list. Oh, you? I think you'll dig it. Do you like Lovecraft? Pardon me? Do you like Lovecraft stories? Uh, yeah. And I'm like that too. I'm like, eh, but I, I respect The Void. I think The Void is a fucking okay. stand-up good film. Okay. Um, I think they mash a, a few Lovecraft things Lovecraft. together. Yeah. yeah. They mash, they mash right. a few things together. Like Again, I, Scott, I think you mentioned it, but like it takes like a page from a few things. Like it almost like seems like, you know, you could have like the the thing with uh, From Beyond or, or, or whatever yes. kind of matched mashed together there. And I delete, I, Vince, I believe it's on a few of the free streaming services. Like, uh, don't quote me, but I think it was on Tubi at one point. So if, if you can't, if you can't find it. Is uh, it on the easily. streaming service Christian's Flex? Yes, it is <laughs> as well. I believe it should be. It better be. It's one of yeah. my favorite streaming services that I yeah. subscribe to. Oh, right. It's also on that. <laughs> right. And have you stopped adding movies though now? Yeah, uh, yeah, for the most part, yes. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't want he doesn't want the FBI finding out. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It's okay. They can't cross the border right now. They might have the wrong vaccines. Don't worry. About That's it. true. All right. Uh, so, Scotty, bring us in with your number three. All right. Uh, my number three is uh, the one entry I wanted to bring up of Cronenberg. And well, that's David Cronenberg because we may see one from his son later on, mm -hmm. just a little teaser. But uh, this one is The Fly from 1986. Nice. I just love this freaking remake. Um, once again, a lot of people know I am a sucker for relationships and horror. And this one has like that strong relationship between uh, Jeff Goldblum and uh, Gina Davis. Like their characters, like the chemistry between them on screen is just incredible. The acting is just all around just fantastic. Jeff Goldblum does such an amazing job of being a scientist that is obsessed and the obsession and what causes his downfall. And then, of course, we just cannot talk about this film without the freaking body horror. Like the body horror special effects in this are just some of the best I've ever seen. It is yep. so gross, so just freaking awesome. I've loved this movie ever since I was a little kid, scared the shit out of me when I seen it with my parents. And since then I became obsessed with it and watched it like over and over and over again. I get it every single time a new copy of it comes out. Uh, yeah, this is just one of my favorite Cronenberg films that I like it's, it was either this or Videodrome and this one like just pushed Videodrome out for me. That's awesome. I love the scene at the end. I'm always yelling, shoot him in the head, bitch. Shoot him in the head. <laughs> like, I get really mad at that scene. And the scene where there's a snapping of a wrist grosses Ew, me. Yeah. Like, I thought that was yeah. like, Ugh! like, and I still like, it makes me uncomfortable when I see it. So, great so, twist, Scotty. No, thank you. I don't want to go off script here, but um, we might as well, because we can, you know, I don't want to talk about it again, but The Fly is my number one. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Number one. You just went off script. It's off script. <laughs> I, Look, it, he's I, the star of the show. He's allowed the to. Best, I talked to his agent. It's, in my opinion, it's one. It's Cronenberg's masterpiece. There's not one false note in the whole movie. Yeah. The pace, the acting, the body horror, uh, everything you guys just mentioned. Like I can watch that movie over and over. And the musical score is. Yeah. It just gives me. I'm getting like goosebumps as we even talk about it. It is one of my favorite goosebumps. Is Goosebumps Canadian? I think it is, isn't it? No, it's, it's not. But you I'm might sorry, as well leave I now. I don't want. I don't want to go on script here. Here's my number one. Hey, I still got other ones, so I can go to number two for my. Uh... You, <laughs> hey, you can just you can just whip them around. Yeah, you can switch them around. You got a one B. 
<laughs> we got a 1B. Uh, well, there's always a little bit. That's an awesome choice. I couldn't agree more, Vince. Like, The Fly upsets me, and that's how you know it's a good film, right? Oh, yeah. Like, it upsets me. Film. Oh, my God. Right? I love it. Yeah, so Almost as much that? as Christian upsets me. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm Just kidding, Christian. You don't upset me. Oh, that skunk. Christian's my favorite head. I just wish he could edit Brandon out of all the episodes, and then it would be even Aww. better to listen to Exploding Heads. Be a lot of editing. She, 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 she's no. sweet talking me, but we know she, Brandon's her favorite. It is. He, I stalk him. And, and David's the least favorite. <laughs> yeah, I'm just jealous of Dave C. I just want to be Dave C. That's why. If only I had. Of Z. If only I had the cult of C and Junior. Like my world would be un- unstoppable, right? It's like, true. Honestly, have you heard about Junior? Vince, we'll talk to you about him after the show. You may want to meet him. Vince um, has not heard of Junior. <laughs> oh boy. We'll talk about Junior oh later. boy. Yeah. Uh, so is it my turn? I guess. Yeah, I got so sidetracked. Um, so my number three is Blood Quantum from 2019. Nice. Uh, I thought this was a great tra- take on the zombie genre. I. I do like how it focused on an Indigenous community. Um, I call it Indigenous. I know different communities want to be called different things, but as a fucking white chick, I'm just going to say Indigenous. And I love there's a scene in it where <laughs> these white people show up with a blanket to an Indigenous community and oh, they yeah. kind of look at them. They're like, well, we have this blanket. And they're like, are you fucking kidding me? And I think that's really funny. Like, I think there's some comedy in there that I'm like, <laughs> clever. Cheers, movie. Like Cheers. <laughs> yeah. um, and I just think the whole build up to it and why, you know, certain people are immune and certain people are not. It was just really well done and, and high quality filmmaking. So if you haven't had a chance to check it out and you enjoy zombie films and maybe want a different take on it a little bit, Blood Quantum 2019. So. Nice. For a second and Christian. There, sorry, sorry Vince. To the washroom, sorry. <laughs> what was that, sorry? I thought Scott was taking us to the washroom for a second. Yeah. He does that. He does no. that. No, we were talking dog. about you know, number two. Things. So he's yeah. like, you guys got to see what I'm working with, yeah. Vince. I'll say we're on our number three. I was about ready to go make it number three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, my dog was getting ready to get. Uh, no, that is uh, <laughs> that is what we get when we're excited. <laughs> okay. but, uh, no, my dog was acting up, so I had to go take care of him real quick. <laughs> I had to go take care what? of him. <laughs> <laughs> I saw an American shotgun on the wall there. <laughs> <laughs> let you first ask questions later yeah right. yeah right. let me rephrase let him outside <laughs> <laughs> so blood quantum what was he... oh sorry, sorry no go ahead i, I was gonna say, say about blood quantum blood that was the movie that we were supposed to get together with heather with last year vince and then we just goose like just ghosted her the whole time i goosed her but we ghosted oh, her and we ghosted and ghosted you remember we, we well we said we were thinking of doing it and i asked hey would you be interested and you're like yeah that should be good and then a year went by <laughs> it happens yeah it happens yeah, keep on top of christian you have to i, I realize now after listening to your show more it probably isn't an appropriate movie for that show especially with oh. circumstances that have come out as of late you probably don't oh. want to use that movie <laughs> Let's just stick to like yeah. cheesy slashers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is and my three has been mentioned twice already, and that's Black Christmas. Nice. Uh, awesome. 1974. 1974, you motherfuckers <laughs> out there. Uh so like that the again, proto slash, or actually we could even say that this is the beginning. This is the slap, like the start. I agree the to say slasher. Show. Yeah. yeah. And and this is this is where you get all the the sort of start of the tropes and everything. Um absolutely creepy. Um you know, great cast. The slow parts of not don't seem slow to me as much as they did even 2 years ago. 3 years ago when, when Vince and I did it on the show we were kind of making fun of but then we were getting invested in while we were watching it we were like, Vince we got to talk. We got to be talking about this movie but we I wanted to watch it. And yeah. and that's what keeps it going and the the whole calls coming from in the house it was great and maybe it would seem weird now or or uh, you'd be able to catch on to it now but back in the day i don't think you would have uh at all uh fantastic about, sorry about old telephones that just make like just makes your skin crawl when that ring happens it's all well you said yes you said it when in our episode of tjf you said it's a character unto itself and i couldn't uh, you know for once i don't disagree with you uh, yeah and then <laughs> it, you remember because yeah, i don't yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the, the phone paraphernalia the phone paraphernalia so, anyway great film and there's a new fan film out there that's a sequel and it was well made and it just dropped two weeks ago i haven't been to watch that it's me billy on youtube that's awesome well made it's like 45 50 minutes nice it's gonna be like the exploding head movie one day well made (laughs) we hope (laughs) we hope it will be it will be that's awesome i love how the black christmas is getting the love it deserves it too like it really deserves oh it it. definitely does you know 
Uh, so yeah, I guess we're up to our number two. Scotty, bring us wow. in. All right. So my number two, uh, I teased a little earlier, but uh, well, it, I'm just keeping it in the family. So Brandon Cronenberg's uh, first feature film, Antiviral, from I think it was 2012. And yeah. man, this film was, uh, you could definitely tell Brandon Cronenberg is taken after his father because <laughs> this film is basically about a company that is selling celebrities diseases for the obsessed fans that are so obsessed that they want to buy and have the same disease as their uh, celebrity that they're obsessed with. And Caleb Landry Jones in this is just so freaking creepy and just kind of just disturbing and gross. And man, this film is just such a good representation of how like scary obsession can be and like how far some people will go. And I just freaking love this film. I watched it probably for the first time about three years ago and yeah I've watched it multiple times since then um and I was so excited when I heard he was doing uh, Possessor was coming out so like now I am a huge fan of Brandon Cronenberg and I want to see what else he does because he definitely follows in his father's footsteps and I think his films kind of hit a little more with me maybe because it's more modern take on a lot of the, the social commentaries that I kind of just understand a little more now but yeah this is just such an incredible film Awesome chase. Awesome choice. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I like him a lot. I, I loved Professor last year. And uh, I look forward to seeing else what, he, what else he does. I wonder if he's going to remake any of his dad's films. That'd be interesting. I'll say if anybody remakes I, it, I, that would be kind of interesting. Oh, yeah. that would be fun, yeah. What do you and think, I liked Christian? both I liked both of the movies that, uh, I, I you know, I thought I saw Antiviral. I actually thought I had watched this. And I rewatched it for, there was the first one I watched it prep for this show. Oh, and wow. I'm like, wow, this, I hadn't seen it before. Oh, nice. And I was really, really blown away. I've liked both that and The Possessor. I've liked both of them. And I'm looking forward, again, kind of like Adam McDonald, I'm looking forward to more or what more he could do. Neither of them made my list, but they're both movies to be seen. No Absolutely. question. Yeah. yeah. All right, then. What's your number two? Well, or three? I don't know, whichever yeah, one you want to give. <laughs> I changed one. the script. That's um, all right. You want to keep us on our toes. <laughs> well, just because it was anyway. But my number three is Backcountry. And um, because it's a movie I did not know. Okay, actually, there's a bit of a backstory here. So when I used to work in television production, um, I was in props and I met this girl and we got to be friends and we're still friends. We obviously don't hang out that much anymore because life changed in 20 years. But her husband is Adam McDonald. And um, so I'm really, I, I, you know, when the film came out, I was like, oh. okay, I'm going to support because he's an actor first. And now he's the director and, uh, and whatnot. And he, I just freaking loved it. I've never been yeah. so freaked out uh, and out of nowhere. Like you could, you could feel the dread starting as they get further and further into the wilderness. And then the attack happens. This is like trying to survive a grizzly bear. It's just, it's fantastic. Fantastic. And that actually happened. That happened in Ontario. Yeah. That's based on a true story. It's modified in the movie, but really that happened just outside of Barrie. Like, I think in the, in the movie, fucking crazy. It was the, it was the, um, it was the girl that was the one that was attacked. Yeah. 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 Right. So, and yeah. Uh, it was a black bear, which they just changed it to grizzly, which oh, is fine. Okay. Who cares? Like, <laughs> honestly, a bear is well, a bear. Does it really correct. fucking matter, right? Like, if there's yeah. a bear, you're going to fucking peace. <laughs> I'm um, a bear and I'm all people. So, you know. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. Well, that What's was even a better movie. Sorry, Scott. Oh, I, that's all right. I was just saying that was that was a good movie. I just watched it last year because Heather recommended it to me one time, and like when we were doing our animal attack episodes, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, I, I called it an earlier. It, it great, and the one thing I really do like about that, on top of it all, is if you go in blind and not knowing the the full story or or looking at the cover art or whatever, they kind of set you up like it might be a slasher or a, a killer in the woods yeah. or yeah. being hunted for sport or or type movie like they tease you with that uh with yeah. that inter encounter only then to be like nope and then how they bring that back at the end is actually kind of like just sort of like icing on the on the, on the cake and that attack is beautifully done beautifully yeah. done yeah. it is so and vicious. it mimics what a bear would do like it's it's oh. pretty close to bear behavior right like that's why I like it so much. And black yeah. bears can get pretty fucking big. I don't know if you guys have been up north a lot, but I've been up to Sudbury and like I ran into a mama with her cubs once and it was the fucking scariest experience in my life. 
I was lucky that it was far enough away that I wasn't a threat, but holy fuck, my heart was, cause you're done. You're done. Like there's no running a fucking black bear. Right. It's so a good point that it's uh, it feels, it feels very natural to, as an instinct to them. Whereas some of these, like, especially these shark movies and stuff, the shark becomes so personal and trying to kill oh, like, right. the shallows and all that. I'm like, come on, like seriously. Yeah. So that's this why time this movie is a little pushing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Sorry. It is scary. It's fucking scary because there's like no rhyme or reason. It just yeah. shows up, and and oh, it, it's so well done, and and they do a good job with the characters as well. I, I mean, it, it, it both that and I said, my wife. That's why I now have to go back and try to find that home sweet home. If again, if that is his first film, I believe it is. You should know. I didn't even realize he was a personal friend. I knew you said you knew him or of I, him. I didn't I've realize never the met connection. Him. I've, obviously, I've never met him. I know his wife oh. very well, and like we work together, yeah. and we're Facebook friends still, and we chat. But that's as much as I know. You guys uh, should do backcountry and get him on there to okay, the commentary for your final episode. Hi. He's, I'm he's still wife. alive. <laughs> you want to come on and talk about backcountry on this awesome podcast? <laughs> Super famous. You can, promote, you, can, you can promote anything you want. <laughs> promote everything. Everything. I guarantee our five listeners will be into it for sure. That's what Scott's cousin always <laughs> says that our podcast has dozens and dozens of listeners. And I'm like, dude, if we have more than six, I'm happy with that. Like, yeah, my cousin. Like expectations. My cousin gives me shit because I'll be like, "Oh, I can't come over tonight. I gotta get. I gotta record." He's like, "Oh yeah, you don't want to uh, disappoint your dozens of listeners." <laughs> <laughs> like you fucker. <laughs> yeah, it's really funny. All right, so I think every I, we're on two, right? So Vince went. No, I yep. went already. Did I go? Yes. No. No, I still have to no. go. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I'm getting good, confused yeah. now with all this movie talk. Sorry. So my number two is Potty Pool from 2008. Nice. Uh, Potty. Potty pool. Potty pool. Potty pool. <laughs> Potty pool. <laughs> it's a TBO special. Yeah. <laughs> Pokeroo pool. Pokeroo. It's actually polka dot door. Yeah. Uh, and today's special combined. Oh, so, today's special. Gonna just start throwing out Canadian references that no one fucking read all about it. <laughs> right? I'm just gonna smile and nod. And Scott's like, yeah. yeah. So Ponty Pool, which I had no idea was a real city until I looked it up and I'm like, oh, what do you know about that? Uh, <laughs> for all the reasons you guys have said, but what I really liked is how the French language was the language that they spoke. Uh, I think that was really interesting for a lot of different reasons. Uh, but the acting and being able to not show certain things, but still create a fear is some really talented filmmaking. And yep. that's what I love about this film is that you only get a couple of real examples of the quote unquote zombies or outbreak or whatever you want to call it. But those examples are done well. And the mass amount of people that you think are closing in, you don't necessarily see them, you hear them. Yeah. And you see the characters, you, you buy into the character's reaction to what is going on. And that's excellent writing, directing, um, and, and everything else that comes with it. So Pawnee Pool, if you're listening nice. and you haven't checked it out, please do. Yes, absolutely. Bruce McDonald. Yeah, right? The movie is incredible. All right, Christian. What's your number? And March Hardcore logo, too. Uh, well, check out uh, every one of his films. It's funny because Brandon, I think, hated Hellions. Or something like that, and that, Brandon and he life. like, and, and and rated it really low. That's another Bruce McDonald movie, but usually he's spot on. But like every director, you know, could have hit. You always have stuff that you like and don't like, but Pawnee Pool is a like for sure. Yeah, and my number two is uh, my like is my bloody Valentine. I don't know. Nice. Why I'm dancing around it. Oh, Love the this slasher film. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, I don't. I actually don't mind the remake. I yeah, like the remake. Fun. Don't it's mind fun. the remake. It was a yeah, shit ton yeah. of fun to watch it in 3D in the theater. <laughs> I had a blast watching it. But no, the original. This is growing on me so much. I liked it as a kid, but I liked it in the way that you know you kind of like some slasher films and never really gave it much of a chance. And then more in the last ten years have developed more of a life for it. Vincent. I did on the show early on. And and it, it just characters, the setting, the gore, the fact that it's been released now with the missing footage that I wanted when I was a kid and everything else. So just you, you put that all together and it's just one of the best slasher films. It's uh, the best out East there. Coast film From, probably that's ever been out there. I've yeah. never seen a more Easter I'm, Coast film. Than that one, Idy Bidy Bo, and out to the fishing mud we go, and out to the and tons of moose head at every frame. Oh my god, moose head's not in the frame. It, it, it's shocking, but it's it's such a fun, uh, great slasher. And the characters are lovable. I love the yeah. characters. Like you, even like the secondary ones that you're like, man, I actually don't want anything to happen to you either, random dude that keeps showing yeah. up in the scene. Like it's it's really <laughs> great in character development of a big group of characters. And Christian, you've talked before about having too many characters. 
And I feel like this is a film that is able to have a fair amount of characters, but does it well. Yeah. Well, and Vin- Vince mentioned Happy Birthday to Me. That's another one that mm-hmm. has a shit ton of characters. And those are two great, like if you see the slasher films that Canada produced, a lot of the top contenders are there. Other than the yeah. Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street and Halloween's, I'm talking about like the ones, the offshoots are typically from Canada. Yes. At least the good ones. Uh, and then like happy birthday to me being one of them. And of course my bloody Valentine. And I think they do juggle the secondary characters well, and they make people likable as opposed mm-hmm. that you want them to die. You have Axel and, and, and TJ, like they actually have a scene where we've got a problem here. We both yeah. like that the same girl and they want to deal with it. And, and you, you kind of like feel bad for both of them. Yeah. And, and they do a good job with that. And, and the fact that you're saying this about a slasher movie script, I think says a lot about it. Absolutely. And the delivery of it. And I just always love it how it's so East Coast. I honestly, whenever time I fucking watch that movie and I've been to the East Coast and I'm like, this is so fucking like, and I think it was filmed in New Brunswick. I feel like. Yeah, I yeah they're in Nova Scotia, but you're right. It, it, oh, it's, is it New Brunswick? Oh, Nova Scotia. Okay. It, don't go again. I it is Nova Scotia. It's Sydney, Nova Scotia, oh, because Sydney. I... Okay. I lovingly recently took over that territory for my work, but because of COVID, haven't been able to travel. And I, I snapshot where it was filmed because I said, when I go out for work, I'm traveling out. That's really cool. Locations of, of the movie. No question. No question. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it is such baller, a good... Baller, <laughs> Yeah. World traveler. <laughs> That is an excellent um, choice because that is a great movie. I didn't put it on my list because I knew that at least it would get talked about once or twice. I was, I had a feeling. <laughs> like that in Black Christmas, right? Yeah. Well, here we are. What we've been waiting for. Our number ones and Vince numbers two or three, whichever one he's going to say. Um, we already know what his number one is, which is yeah, The Fly, in case you didn't hear it earlier. Excellent film. So, Scotty, bring us in with your number one. All right. So, uh, Heather probably has an idea because I haven't brought it up yet. But uh, my number one film, uh, this is another one I had to go with for Astron 6. It's The Editor. Uh, I just fucking yeah. love the shit out of this movie. It is so goddamn funny. It's an homage to every Italian horror film out there. Like if you've seen any Dario Argento or Lucio Falci or just any even like more obscure uh, Italian directors, like you will get a lot of these references. Like they they show a lot of love and care. It it spoofs the Italian genre, but at the same time, like gives it love as well. Like yeah. every Bella. actor is Bella. <laughs> Bella. 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 <laughs> but like I love it because they're Canadian and they overdub their own voices with their own voices, so which funny. makes it even better. Oh my god. And they just overact the shit out of it the there are so many quotable lines that's an excellent penis you have there yeah <laughs> just, you're just the editor <laughs> you're just, you're just the editor <laughs> i mean and you got udo kier in there just playing some crazy just crazy mental doctor and just everything in this just clicks for me i'm like as you, as a lot of people probably know by my taste i love the over the top ridiculous horror with comedy and this one has it in spades it's over the top violence, tons of nudity, and it's not just oh here's a bunch of naked women. It's like no, here's naked women, here's naked men. We don't lots care. For me it's, too. Yeah, I'll say. To yeah, like it was like just my cock. Yeah, it was equal opportunity. Right? <laughs> and who doesn't? Exactly. <laughs> who doesn't love it? Um, and yeah, this is just I could go on and on and on about this film. I freaking love it. And like I said, I could have made a top five of just Astron Six or movies that the parts of this team have done because. It, they just know what they're doing. I freaking love them, and I can't wait to see whatever else they c- decide to do. Awesome number one, yeah. Scotty. Awesome. Uh, all right, Vince. Well, you know, since I fucked it all up, this might no. this, this might bring it back because this movie, I can't get enough of it. I will always watch it, and it, it's become a, a, such a cult classic in my mind, and I think for everybody else. And it also spawned one of the only Canadian sort of franchises that have gone on to four films. I mm. Oh, I know what you're gonna say. Yep. Prom night, prom night, prom night. <laughs> Everything night. is all right, all right. Lynch's prom this doesn't night. vindicate you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> but you know, we got Hello Mary Lou, Prom Night 2, Prom Night 2, The Last Kiss, all Canadian, but they got more comedy. But yeah, Prom Night is amazing. Uh, I just, uh, it, everything about it, it it's, I know there's a huge flaws. I don't like some of the kills either, but because probably the rating or the gore that they couldn't master back then or whatnot, even though the ending is pretty good with the chopped off head. But yeah, just a great movie. The twist, it's the brother all along. You know, I just, ah! I don't know how else to say it without sounding like a spoiler. <laughs> yeah, everyone has to see prom night. You've never seen it. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, shut off this podcast and go watch it. Yeah. Come back to us later. Definitely. Oh, I just it's watched it last awesome night. Movie. My synapse blew. I cracked it nice. open, nice. watched it, and and it I and it's it's so much fun. Uh, the biggest critique that gets is that here's another slasher that really the slasher doesn't start until like the 55 minute hour mark almost of an hour and a half movie. Yet in this case, it works. Somehow mm-hmm. they make it work because you because you get that Jallo type killer at the beginning and <laughs> or whatever. Like, but also know, the little first, girl but... dying at the beginning too kind of gives yeah. you that immediate shock and then you're yeah. getting over that. And then, yeah. yeah, this is one of those films that, uh, like, Heather knows this about me. I just—I wasn't going to say anything, Scott. <laughs> well, I disliked the movie the first time I watched it. <laughs> I watched it again the second time, and I'm going, "All right, that's." I'm liking it a little more. And then we watched it for our uh, prom episode, or no, it was. Uh, it was our we, we compared it to the remake. Yes, that was our remake episode. <laughs> yeah, not but, uh, like the original. <laughs> Watching it on the third time, I freaking loved it. I think it was just, it just took some getting used to because, yeah, it, there is really no slasher part to the film till like, yeah, the last like 25 minutes. And it's, it's the characters weird. that keep this movie going. Like, I really just got invested this last time. And yeah, it just kept going up and up every time I watched it. Leslie Nielsen. I got, yeah, Leslie yeah. Nielsen. Hip to Superior. That's the only thing I almost wish they just had one like bookend moment with him showing up at the, just at the end. Cause I understand why they did it. Cause to, to kind of be like a red herring, yeah. no question. But then he just doesn't show up at the end and he's he like top to, billing. He went to go <laughs> play on airplane. That's why. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> like, I got a piece guys. I got a lot of movies yeah. I got to make. Exactly. Right. <laughs> right. Now, Scott, have you seen the prominent sequels? Cause they get funny. Oh, oh okay. yes. I like, I loved uh hello Lou, Mary Lou, like, or hello, oh, Mary Lou. Prom night too, yeah. Yep, and it's then like, uh, I was kind of surprised it. Christian's not upset that we didn't bring up Prom Night 4. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Christian didn't I, like Prom Night 4. No, I'm the one that likes it. Yeah, he's oh, the one that had it in his top I'm 50 slashers. That that ever, I, I, I will never live it down because I did leave it. It's a good slasher. I like it. It has yeah, everything you need in a slasher movie. It's a little slow, but yeah. I, I guess I was trying to shine a light on it because it gets universally hated yeah. on. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Why? So I think it's I pushed in, it there, yeah. but then I did keep off some of my ones that I would normally go back and revisit more so than that. So that was my misstep. But yeah, I like Prom Night 4. And I'm not afraid to admit it. Anymore. Yep, and same. I like, like uh, Prom Night 4. I think it's fun. Yeah, the only one I was not the biggest fan of was Part 3. And that yeah, one was Part 3 is okay. a little over the top silly for me personally, but I still Super think the series corny. is fun, yeah. right? Pardon? Super corny, Part 3. Yeah. Part 2 is like they took every horror favorite and tried to smush it into one movie. <laughs> yes. We've got Nightmare on Elm Street. We've got Friday. They did everything. Yeah. It makes me yeah. laugh. Yeah. I feel like they had a pretty good budget for that one. I feel like they like had a lot of money. Well, I think... Two, part right? one, and, like the first one and part two, are the only ones that made it to to screen, not direct to video. Sense. I think direct to video started. No, no, part three was in the movies or the theater. Really? Part. Yeah, in the movies Briefly. at the show at, at the, the show exterior. at the Burlington Mall Cinema. That's <laughs> yeah, exactly Jackson Square. Yeah, Jackson Square Cinema, which is still Which's there. Right? Which are beautiful now because they redid right. Them. Nice. They were like, "Let's do this bitch up and make people yeah, want to yeah. come here. <laughs> Get rid of those like bullet holes in the seat." That's we what we'll do when we go on our first date, Heather. We can always just when the things are oh, open, we can go back there. Yeah, for sure. I'm so excited. <laughs> you hear that, everybody? Vince <laughs> wants to go out with me. Finally, the gay quarterback wants to go out with me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about it, yeah. Right. I'll take what I can get. Um, so I guess yeah, it's my turn. Yes, so, what is your number one? Ravenous 2017. This is Ooh. a Czech film. And holy fuck was it emotional. Like this movie went in, grabbed my heart, and squeezed it out of my heather chest the entire time I was watching it. Uh, the characters are believable. How they react is believable. There's an ending scene where someone makes a sacrifice where I kind of represented with this character uh, because she's made a lot of choices that I have made. I, I don't have children. I'm not married. Um, and I, you know, my career has been my focus for a very, very long time. And I kind of really represented with that and some of the choices she makes. And 
holy fuck is it a good film like holy fuck the french man whether it's quebec or whether it's france they they fucking get to you they don't care they don't hold back they're like you like it no you don't like it you're gonna look you want to look look (laughs) like it's it's that's how they roll and this movie if you gotta like subtitles or no french but it's totally worth it and i believe it's on netflix still so check it out if you haven't had a chance to also based on the zombie genre you had fucking two zombie movies. I'm a zombie fanatic. And people are like, oh, zombie movies are getting tired. And yet we've had some of the best in the yes. last few years. Yes, yes, we have. They just keep reinventing or or giving us something new, whether mm-hmm. it's from South Korea or or whether it's from Canada. And we, we get some of these, like, and that just tells you it's all about the way they tell the story. Exactly. Uh, and and, and that, that movie was fantastic. What was the other Canadian zombie movie that came out that same year? I swear where there was two uh, i have to look at my Are list you thinking think of cargo? No, that no, was that was Canadian. on my list. I think that was UK. Yeah. Uh, I love that as well. Maybe that is what I'm thinking of, which I I did love oh, that movie. The girl with all the gifts. Was that Canadian? No, that was another one that came out that year. I think that was a anyway, I, Okay. I'm going to have to look but yeah, that movie's great. Good pick. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I love it. I, Vince, if you've not had a chance to watch it, it's a really it's a really uh, good film. Yeah, because this is like, one I have not seen either. On Netflix list. So. Yeah, it's worth it, honestly. Like, watch it before. Hopefully it doesn't get removed from Netflix anytime soon, because sometimes Netflix is sneaky. Oh. You'll be like, I'm going to watch that movie, and you go on, you're like, what? How? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if, it's, right? if it's a Netflix original, I know it'll be there forever, so I just don't right. bother. True. I'll put it on the list and file it away, but I know that if it's not, I'm like, oh, shit, I should watch that. It's true, right? Yeah, because this is one I still need to see, actually, because I remember you watched it last year, and oh, you yeah. were, like, really, like, surprised by it, and I meant to get to it, but I never did. I will so, tell yeah. you right now, if you had, Scott, I know you, this would have been on your list. Oh, that's nice. how good it is. Okay. Like that's how good it is. So, and now we save the best for last for the boss. Uh, <laughs> <Whatever>. Christian, <laughs> what do you well, got? Like for I us? said, way too many. You've noticed that there hasn't been any Cronenberg films mess- mentioned yet. And you guys have mentioned, all of you have mentioned movies that I love. I mean, whether it be the dead zone, which is fantastic, the fly, which has been which is a fantastic, uh rabid, uh, but it's video drone. Video drone's my number. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I, 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 I it's it, it's one of my favorite films ever. Um, I always feel like I pull another piece out of it. Vince and I studied it in school. Remember it was one of our projects. Farewell to the flesh, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's just always from from that moment, I think that was my second or third time seeing it in university. So it was like a movie that I had watched, like, you know, watched it once as a kid. And I real, I know why I wanted to see it. It was one of those movies that was previewed on a show that my dad was watching, maybe entertaining it tonight, but which doesn't seem like it would have been on, but it was something like that show. And I remember he's like, Christian, don't come in here. And I remember seeing the, 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 the something coming out of the TV yeah, and being it. intrigued, but being kind of scared. And he, my dad was trying to, you know, you know, protect me because I was uh, young at the time. Um, even though was, uh, when that came out, I was nine. I was nine years old. My <laughs> son has seen worse than, than that. But but it was just a preview on TV. But I was definitely a, a, a scaredy cat kid. And I remember just having this impact on me then and then realizing what movie it was later. But anyway, the film itself is great. Pull something new from it every time I watch it. My all-time favorite Cronenberg film. And it deserves to be seen. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Um, kind of a, a hodgepodge of genres. But I, I have I don't think anybody would argue that it's, it can't fit beautifully into the horror genre. Awesome film. Awesome Again, film. It's amazing. And ahead of its time in special effects. Ahead of its time. And in storytelling. I think yeah. and in themes and everything else, which Cronenberg kind of was. Yes, he was. Uh, Absolutely. I keep saying that every movie was like kind of like a an expansion upon his original idea. Oh, yeah. Like you got oh. Shivers or, or they came from within and then Rabid and then Brood and then Scanners Excellent. and then re, uh, Videodrome. They all feel like they could have been starting kind of as some sort of remake of one another if you will mm-hmm. just building upon the ideas but i'll bring something new to the table each time not not uh just rehashing yeah, and his films right. are always loaded with like a lot of social commentary too which is just great yeah. yes exactly no i remember christian it was the uh, remember before city tv became city tv it was channel 78 or something like that and then it was moses Neimer who used to put all these sort of like blue movies at night horror movies and that's the first time i saw a video drone because you know it was like being able to watch a scary movie on tv come on and this is like 1983 three, this three uh, so it probably been 84 85 when it came but this was yeah. actually the preview 
You know, when they do those like new from Horror Master, uh, yeah. David Cronenberg, it was like, it was like a, a sneak peek, but not uh, the, the, the okay. trailer on TV. That's what it was that, so it could have been 82 even, but it just, I just know that it, it was before release and I didn't, wasn't in a horror at that time. It scared the shit out of me, which yeah. is again, why I always say I'm fascinated now because it scared me to yeah. death when I was a kid. <laughs> well, and now your son can sit through things like Serbian film and Solo and he's absolutely fine. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. He's like, come on, it, dad, this isn't rough. Yeah. Well, Please. My Good God. boy, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christmas! I would there's there, those movies. I like fun in my movies. Yeah, I, I, my movies need to be. There's got to be some element of fun, and mm-hmm. if not, then I'm like, why the fuck am I watching this? <laughs> not to promo our last Patreon, but we did top five uncomfortable films, and we watched those two movies. And you know, oh. for shock value, they're great. If you want to be shocked and you want to see how far someone can push a limit and gross you out that's fine but when you look at something like videodrome which is gross in parts like there's parts that will make you grossed out and uncomfortable but there's more to it yeah it's more than just shock cinema there's a story behind it yeah there's substance right there's substance and i think that's the biggest difference right my least favorite type of uh subgenre is um torture or yeah i don't like torture i try i only got to saw three and i was like you know what i don't want to do this anymore you got to revisit those though they're they're silly they're they are really the millennium's answer to friday the 13th or stuff yeah, like that yeah. it delivered i agree like the first time i saw him i could t- kind of take or leave saw them <laughs> take or leave them but then ultimately i i they grew on me and i actually like the series now though them and and hostel is another one um like all hostel, three actually. all three are, are worth checking out but one and two are, are definitely uh oh yeah the one with the girl the girls get revenge on their kidnappers what's, what's that series called oh uh i thought you were just talking about pardon me the, the girls get revenge on their kidnappers. i spit on your grave yeah spit on your grave um uh is that the one that, there's a few of them now right yeah and then yeah. there's like it follows one of the characters for a couple of films and oh, her maybe. one talks about her trauma and it's a very interesting take on it so I that's gonna be our know? films i I, I piss on your grave and then I shit on your grave. We're doing a little spin off. Coming soon to follow up yeah. the Serbian yeah, and Solo. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> but it's literally just, it, it just braided, taking a massive dump on someone's grave it's, for an hour and a half. It's like an 80 awesome. Warhol experience. It's very artistic, you know? It's just, and it's going to get a criterion release as well when it's done. Yeah. <laughs> right? What they're trying to say about society is that. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> Well, that, you guys have it. We have different lists, some similar films, but lots of different films we talked about today. So if you are listening and you're like, oh, I didn't watch that Canadian film, we have a variety from the 70s to this year that you can yeah. check I out. I spoiled half of them, sorry. No, you didn't. You were great, Vince. Don't even think otherwise. Yeah, we spoil the crap out of all the movies. This so. is what we do. Like, honestly, if you're listening to a top five and you don't expect to have some spoilers, like... It's spoiled his own list. His own list. list. We're at number five. And my number one's to fly. (laughs) (laughs) It's like he can't even contain himself. (laughs) You know what? It's just like ending the last, like reading the last page of the book and wondering how you got there, which leads us to our promos where you're going to have something to promo about a book, Christian. So why don't we let you gentlemen go ahead and promo whatever it is you want to talk about, except for exploding heads. Just kidding. (laughs) Nobody wants that. (laughs) Go ahead, Vincey. No, no, you go ahead. Hi, Christian, you got the actual promo. Oh, I well, I I'm not going to promo anything uh, podcast related. I'm just going to. I talked about my wife's book earlier. It's out out of the gutter. It's, you can get it on Amazon. There's a, there are some promotions that are going. If you're if you have Kindle Unlimited in the states, you can read it for free. I think still, uh, and you can buy it in paperback copy and whatnot. She's already written her. Uh, she's 35 chapters, 36 chapters in her book two. Nice. She's writing right now. I've already read the first 17 chapters of that just as a a pre read. I can't. I it's night. Like, it's amazing. I, I can't be more proud of her. It, it's awesome. A totally different book, totally oh, different okay. story. Uh, and th- this is, and I won't even spoil the title because I don't even know if she wants it out there yet because that's for her to talk about. But I just, it's so excited about what's been, like she's accomplished in this year of COVID. Yeah. Like, where's the movie, <laughs> it's Kristen? crazy. Honestly, she wrote a fucking book and you're like, I'm at 513th for eight times. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> Uh, my big claim to fit is how many fucking movies I watch, which is still a pittance compared to like all these other people that are out there that do it annually anyway. I said <laughs> annually. Vince, don't get excited. No, we- <laughs> I was going to say, is this new book that Carrie's writing like um, how to torture your overbearing and crazy husband? Is that what <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a self-help book, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's a self-help book. <laughs> 
Let's read it. Um, this, this seems oddly familiar. <laughs> I have actually Golf bought. Penis. Oh, that, yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. <laughs> I have actually bought copies of Carrie's book, and yes, thank you, my Heather. mom and my three. aunt have three. Um, <laughs> my mom and my aunt have read it. I also bought it for my wife. My my wife. My mom's best friend. <laughs> Whoa. By the way, guys, <laughs> you have a lesbian. No Men weren't working. <laughs> Thought I'd try it out. Got to learn how to eat box now. Um, <laughs> I heard it Do the alphabet it a backwards. <laughs> oh, yeah. Got it. All right. Um, but no, the, the story is amazing. Uh, both my mom and my aunt said this is a book that should be read by young women uh, because it's just so strong and that the writing awesome. is so clear. The chapters are perfect length. And they can't wait for more. They they said to me both, like, when is she writing another book? I said, hopefully soon. They're like, we'll buy it because we really well, like it. So I, I, I'll go on and on and on. But you had already did like a challenge that she wrote half of a, a book. And that's not even book two. So that was what she did last year to challenge herself. And that she wrote uh, 50,000 plus words of, of another whole oh. story. And that's coming down. And then she said, no, I don't want that to be book two. And then she started book two from scratch. And that's the one that I was reading. Oh, so wow. she's already, again, it's just flowing out of her, but not, it, but it's so good. Like I'm yeah, blown away. Now I'm not an avid fiction reader to be totally honest. Neither am I, I read, actually. I more read like nonfiction. I'll read like yep. how to uh, biographies, that type of thing. Uh, and so this is now, yeah. <laughs> He's still learning. But, that's what you yeah. taught me the alphabet <laughs> trick. <laughs> no, now I say spell AstraZeneca, he... AstraZeneca. Forward and backward, forward and backward. That's what I do. Yeah. yeah. How to find the G spot? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've been looking for fucking ever. <laughs> Google Maps does not help me. He's like, is it under the bed? Is it in the cupboard? <laughs> I found my G spot. Does that count? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, promo still promo your podcast, Christian. Like, pro promo oh. your and Vince's podcast at least. Good question. Oh, I thought Vince was going to do that. Oh, Vince, you do it. What do you do? If I knew the next time we were actually going to record, because we were supposed to record last month, and then Christian's like, "Oh, I got my dates mixed up again." And then, well, nothing happened. Uh, I did want to. This this is how my mind worked. We were going to keep it consistent. Then we missed May, so then we thought June. Well, here we are, already June nineteenth. Uh, am I allowed to say the date? Because now I'm stamped. Oh, yeah, you better get this fine. episode Same out fast. Is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now I don't think we're going to do June because, hey, we've been on your show. And thank you for having us on the show because it's been fantastic. Absolutely. So that will be June. So maybe July now. But I've got every every new show has guests on it. That's the thing. So I've already got the guests lined up. And I, I have no problem saying it. We've got Dave Radone, who was like, listen to us from day one. Paul Stevenson. I love Paul. Nice. I heard Paul. I heart Paul. It's gonna come up, yes. And 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 I I told them that you do, uh, that Paul. you brought uh, you brought his name up on on I think our show, mm -hmm. uh, and so he's uh, he agreed to to come on and he says I guess to dust off his equipment. I'm like Paul, <laughs> you've, he's got a great voice. He's so, so he fucking perfect. funny, and he's like and, his dry humor is out of this. Yeah, world. like it's and he's from great. Buffalo too, or North Tonawanda area too. So yeah. uh, he's, yeah. he close proximity, man. And then uh, Lisi and Dan were gonna join us for Scream Four, but Vince wanted to do that one next. But I'm like, well, with five coming out in January, we should probably push that down the road a little bit. Yeah. So well, again, with the, I'm, just, I'm just talking so fucking much. You guys are supposed to stop me. Well, I just so anyway, know why I'm soon, I'm back soon, Didn't I have the highest number of views when I came on the show? Or was that when you, the show kind of tanked? You, you know, <laughs> no, honestly, you were, you were a great guest. Yeah. You were a great guest. Uh, it's all been very even, Stephen. Uh, Preston to Francis, I think got. Uh, I well, Preston. I think now Preston's was good, and yours was right there, right below it. I love Preston. <laughs> but I mean, like, I know like I can't like, beat Preston. I listened to Preston the whole time, like make a oh, movie. <laughs> that was me the whole time, like oh, I <laughs> like and Vince and I have been on the room, like Preston, you're the best. Preston, oh, you're just so good. Can we just talk about you for an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, but he's great. He's he's so like, easy going too. Sorry, man, what's going we're, on? We're we're gonna be fully you know vaxxed and waxed in a, in a week or so. So why don't we get together in July? And actually do a real one yeah and fuck yes you mean no we can, we can have the guests on but then oh, we'll make it easier i want to be the okay, next guest i'll then. come by and i'll bring in film i'll come I'll with the camera the and i'll be the production support <laughs> yeah there we go okay so you're you got to do the lighting just right okay yeah, yeah. and i'll so have the sausages that, when we're in there we'll both be double vaxxed we could do it live we could eat sausages it can be old school but we <laughs> will have the i can't not have the guests on now because i told them oh my god <laughs> we're gonna have guests so I, we'll, we'll stay true to our word but we'll we'll finish this off 
the way it should always been. That's, That's it. Awesome. That was a very long plug for our show. <laughs> well, and you deserve it. And also there is the Exploding Heads podcast. We plug this show all the time on our regular Never heard feed. Of it. Um, oh, it's full of these. There's, there's three sexy stallions. And let me tell you, I just watch it because I've replaced my Pornhub watching with the video. That's all right. I need is the three of them. Um, you guys are on video now? Yeah, they're on video. They're on YouTube. I watch the okay, YouTube video all the time. <laughs> Marley, basically for everyone's facial reaction to shit because it's really yeah. a supportive friend that's all right? uh so for three dollars a month uh four dollars three dollars a month american four dollars a month canadian that's you can one. get access <laughs> you can get access to this awesome show uh brandon christian and dave had amazing chemistry they always bring the knowledge bring the humor uh christian is an amazing editor Please, if you're not already supporting them, what are you waiting for? Sign up for Patreon, Exploding Heads Today. If you're already listening to Legion on Patreon, all you got to do is search Exploding Heads and add them to your to your queue as well. So uh, that being said, if you are a Legion Patreon, thank you so much for supporting Legion Network and listening to the show. We will continue to release this on Legion first, on the Patreon, sorry, first, and then our regular feed. But eventually we will not do that, we promise. So we're going to stop putting out for free and you're going to have to put a fucking ring on it. So that's right. Um, a cock for ring that. for me. I would a cock be, ring for Scott. Took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> <And> the cock. <laughs> Scotty, was there anything you wanted to add before we say goodbye to the good people? Yes. I just want to say thank you, Christian. Thank you, Vince. This was a freaking blast. I'm so happy to work with both you guys. Uh, I'll say, cause I've worked with Christian before and I've wanted to work with Vince and finally getting to meet you events is fucking great i'm hoping we can uh, actually all four of us get to meet in person someday and uh have some drinks and have a great time so i'm looking forward to that and yeah love you guys this has been fantastic yep you know for my Thank first you. uh uh i guess guest, guest appearance this has been wonderful experience i will start charging future you know uh <laughs> everybody that's listening but i really you guys were fab- fabulous fantastic had a good time awesome awesome i'm so happy to hear that Awesome, awesome. And yeah, and thank, you. thank you. No, I just, I, again, I have to say thank you because I always, the last time when, when Scott came on our show, it was a blast. You've been on TGAF, Heather, and you've been on Exploding Heads. Yeah, I get around. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> true. So, thank you. And thank you for having me on as well, too. Oh, absolutely. Like I said, like I, I was so excited to get uh, invited to Exploding Heads and actually get to work with you. And I was like, because I've talked to Brandon and, and Dave like quite a bit. I didn't get a chance to talk to you much. And then when we finally did that show, I was like, hell yeah, this is great. Get to finally talk to Christian. Yeah, you went on Too solo. They, they can't even take me one-on-one. They <laughs> need another chick there because they can't handle it. Like Brandon well, just doesn't want to reveal our love for each other. And our- Well, I was going to say, because that, that's because if it was just you, Brandon would not stop just harassing you the whole time. I know, I know, because he's obsessed with me. Like, not like he is anything. obsessed. He is. I'm like, you're obsessed yeah. with me. He's like, I'm not obsessed with you. I don't bring you up at all. And then I listen to the show. Yeah, Heather. <laughs> Constantly. If it's not a bad I'm dad fired. joke, he's uh, he's pretty damn funny, man. He has me crying. Every he is episode. really funny. The oh, fucking he guy. He has a good yeah. personality, which is good. It makes up for other things, right? Like you know. yeah. his micro dick. <laughs> his micro dick. I have never met somebody who talks about how small his penis is all the time. I'm like, seriously, dude. Like, no one will ever be disappointed because they're going to expect That's- like nothing. I think uh, maybe I told him this. I go, you got to, if you set that expectation low, like right. I think it was even the last episode we're joking. <laughs> like, oh, I got a small dick and I come quick. Uh, dinner? <laughs> <laughs> you lead it with that, you got no problems moving no. forward. It, it, no. you, you put it all out there. And really, who needs this to last for hours? We all got fucking shit to do. I don't need to bang for three fucking hours, all right? Like, let's get this shit done and get to some nachos, all right? As long as we all get where we need to get to. Because I've been starving myself the entire day. Right, I've been starving myself, so I look good when we fuck. Now I want to go eat. Like, all right? This is is how it is. Hashtag 38, hashtag honesty. Um, But seriously, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining. This has been such a pleasure. Um, if you aren't super offended by the end of this episode, listen to us on the Friday Nightmares podcast. You can listen to more of Scott's smoke showness and his 1-800 number that he's starting. That's um, right. Got that sex line getting, get, getting it lined up. He's got his tube top ready to go. So thank yeah, you right. for listening. Uh, thank you to Vincent Christian. And we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.